We are live at the Las Vegas Convention Center at the 2017 US Open presented by Supermicro. My name is Ryan Willard and to my left is the Director of Media and Communications for USA Table Tennis who also happens to be a former New Zealand national team member and a New Zealand national champion for men's doubles, Mr. Matt Hetherington. And to my right is the one, the only, four-time national champion, two-time Olympian, way too many other things to names, we got Lily the Hammer Zhang. Welcome to the show, Lily. Thank you, thank you for having me. You're so welcome. This is the pregame push, and we got a bunch of stuff to break down because the men's quarterfinals are about to begin. So we just kind of want to look through what's been going on for the past few days, because I just rolled up to Vegas yesterday. So Matt, if you could help me and kind of walk me through what's been happening the last few days. Well, I mean, the last few days we've had some really exciting table tennis. Before the US Open even started, we had the 2018 Youth Olympic Games qualification uh, for North America. So 16 boys, 16 girls, uh, eight from Canada, eight from the USA. The best youth players from those two countries, and they were fighting for one spot at the 2018 Youth Olympic Games, an event that Lily will be no stranger to having won a bronze medal four years ago at the last uh, edition of that tournament and uh, yeah some great matches and it was uh, in the end two Americans that came out on top uh, Kanak Ja and Amy Wong and uh, great finals great matches throughout and of course now we've started the US Open uh, which is one of the premier events for the year uh, over 800 players and over 100 tables and we're kind of getting down to the crunch time matches now and we're gonna see some really exciting table tennis coming up in a few moments after this show on table one uh, with the men's singles quarterfinals. Uh, but yeah, really outstanding matches and hopefully you guys can stay tuned and follow us throughout all the way through to the finals, which will be at the Foundry, the same venue as last year at the SLS Casino and Hotel. Now, to jump to the women's bracket, to my right, Lily, you were down 3-0 today in a match and you somehow came back to win 4-3. Can you please yeah. explain to me what happened, how you did that, and what was going on? Yeah, I mean, that was definitely one of the most significantly dramatic matches of my life. I was down 3-0, 10-8, um, but each game, each game up to that point where it was really, really close, it was either deuce or nine, so, you know, it wasn't a complete blowout, and I knew I had the chance to fight back, so once it got to 10-10 and I won that game, I knew I had the momentum going, and, you know, it ended up working well. <laughs> I won 4-3. All right, I got a personal question. When was the last time you practiced before the U.S. Open? Uh -oh. I practiced <laughs> on Friday. Right Friday. Because I finished finals on Thursday. So you finished finals, practiced for one day, and then showed up to the U.S. Open. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and that is why she's one of the most feared players, because you don't even practice, and you're still incredibly Mental dangerous. Practice. Mental practice. Yeah. Did you do anything else to prepare for this? or? Um, I was really busy with finals, but right after, you know, I went to ICC, trained with the coaches, and then I actually got here on Saturday, so I was able to warm up here, get used to the venue, and that really helped me a lot. Nice. And is there anything you're looking forward to, or do you have any goals going forward in this U.S. Open? Yeah, I mean, I, I've never won a U.S. Open championship before, so that would be a dream to, to you know, make Something it Something Lily year. has not done, apparently. <laughs> wow, okay. Hopefully this is the year. We'll I would see. love to see that. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Now, Matt, I know it's been insanely crazy with the men's bracket. <laughs> I want to know what the point of the day was, in your opinion. Okay, so we've had a lot of exciting matches on tables one and two during the tournament, but today, this afternoon, was probably the best point of the tournament uh, that I've seen between Kanak Ja and Jun Han Wu, and probably about a 30-shot rally, both players counter-looping, just uh, by far, the definitely, and I've been commentating, all, well, nearly every match on table one <laughs> since we arrived and you can see this point starting now uh, both really high caliber players of course uh, Jun Han from based from China uh, but the highest rated table tennis player that's been active in the US this year against Kanak who's a, a youth Olympian now and an Olympian just uh, really high level from both players and yeah, so outstanding. Yeah. It was a really yeah. exciting yeah. point that and a really exciting the match. So the whole match went the down to the wire uh, all the way to the end. And uh, Junhan managed to come out on top. Uh, well fought by Kanak, but yeah, that, that point was definitely my point of the day. It was insane seeing Kanak lose in that match because he fought so well and it really came down to that one single game at the end. Yeah, that's right. 
That was unbelievable. So going forward, now we're moving to the men's quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. I want to talk predictions, see what you guys think about who is moving on. First match we have going on, we got Lucian Blaschik going up against Tao Wenjong. Mm -hmm. Lily, who do you think is going to take that match? That one's, I think that one's a tough one to call. I mean, Lucian has so much experience, you know, he's played so many international tournaments, so he has that going for him. But at the same time, I think Tao has, um, he's in really good shape, he's been practicing. So, I mean, we'll see if it's pra uh, experience versus, uh, you know, physical ability. You gotta choose one. We're betting cheeseburgers on this. <laughs> I'm going to say Tal, just because I'm closer with him. And, okay. Yeah. Matt, what about you? Uh, I'm really torn on this one because I've seen Tao Wenjiang compete with some top European players before. And of course, he already overcame in the last round a four-time Olympian from Europe, Damien Alois from France. Uh, so I'm a little bit split on this one, but uh, I'm going to call possibly Lucien Blaschek. Uh, I think I'd give him a slight favor, but I think it's going to be a really close match. Mm -hmm. I would agree. I definitely think it's going to be close. I'm going to put my money on Tao simply because the name Swan Warriors is pretty much the most frightening <laughs> team name I've ever seen, and that's yeah. his new club. So that's our first match. Our second one, we've got Tomoya Fujimara going up against Taimu Arinobu. Matt, who do you think has the advantage in that match? Um, I mean... I haven't seen both players in action. Fujimura has played twice on table one, and I've commentated two of his matches. And I know he's been ranked in the top 200 in the world previously. And from what I've seen from him so far, uh, I mean, okay, I haven't seen the other player yet, but I'm going to throw my weight in behind Fujimura because I've been really impressed with the, the way that he's played, uh, the technical skill, and just the stability that he has in his game. He's been consistent, but he manages to balance it well with aggression. So he's quite dangerous. Lily, what about you? I would agree with Matt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in reality, I don't think the country of Japan can lose in that match because both players represent That's Japan. True. They've been pretty dominant going forward in this tournament. Uh, I mean, it's always going to be a difficult call for someone like Lily, who's a little bit preoccupied playing in the <laughs> tournament to really be able to see some foreign players. And these Japanese players, we don't really see them that often in interna international competition. Uh, so sometimes the US Open is the first time that we're seeing them. Well, speaking of Japanese players, we have Kohai Morimoto, who beat Jiwei Shu this afternoon, going up in our third match, going up against Ye Qian. Any thoughts, Lily? Um, well, I think uh, Tianya is a bit of a surprise, actually. He, he had a few upsets against uh, Timothy Wang yesterday, 4-3, mm. really close match. And this morning, he just beat uh, Junpu. So I think he's in really good shape. And I heard that he recently came back from China as well. So, you know, obviously good training there. But he's playing against the Japanese, which, you know, how strong they always are. So oh, yeah. tough call, but I, I think that the Japanese uh, has maybe a bit of a edge in okay. this match. Now, what about you? I'm throwing my weight in behind Morimoto. Uh, again, another Japanese player that's been ranked between 270 and 300 in the world for a, a period of about five years. Uh, so he's got a lot of international experience behind him. I think Tanya is a, a, a bit of a wild card. I've seen him play in US events before and he's had mixed results. Uh, I guess he's playing fairly well at the moment. But I think uh, Morimoto has a really strong service game and I imagine he'd probably be able to take this one. So I'm behind Morimoto on this one. I'm gonna throw my money on Morimoto also. I'd seeing him today, his accuracy and his service was off the charts when he beat Ji Wei this afternoon. It was insane. Um, our last match, we've got Young Tae Park going up against Jun Han Wu, and Jun Han beat Canuck, which at that point you saw earlier. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Lily? Oh, this is another tough one. I mean, Park is only 14 years old, I believe, and actually it's it's kind of an advantage to be that young because you have nothing to fear. And you, you can kind of compare him to Harimoto as well from Japan, who's like the wonder boy yeah. and doing super well. But at the same time, Wu Jun Han, you know, he's an amazing. His foreign is incredible in that point against Kanak. Absolutely Unreal. unbelievable. So I think probably Wu Jun Han has, has a bit of the edge, but you know, you never know with Park. Okay. Now, what about you? Uh, this is an easy one for me because <laughs> I, I know Jun Han really well and uh, I've had the opportunity to train with him on an almost daily basis and I've seen him perform against just so many different players and this year he beat Ji Wen 
uh, at the Westchester Open, who was formerly top 100 in the world for so many years. Uh, so I'm throwing my weight behind my training partner. I feel it would be a little bit disgraceful if I didn't. Uh, so I'm calling Jun Han Wu to win that match. Just a quick question. What kind of tools and weapons did Jun Han go into this match having? Because you've seen his entire gamut. Um, I think he has just really solid foundations. And a player that plays in the A-League in China is really almost at the top levels of the sport. And uh, there's just a strict... Uh, regime schedule of training uh, that allows Chinese players to be more athletic, tighter in points uh, with serve and receive and I think everything's just really fine-tuned down to almost an art and they make it look so easy and I think it's it's so automatic for Jun Han. Uh, he, he just plays really really solid table tennis and I think that's his biggest his biggest weapon is foundation. Excellent well those are our predictions and this was the pregame push Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to throw it up to Mark Thompson right now and continue the 2017 U.S. Open presented by Supermicro because we're here all week leading up to the finals on Thursday. Mark? Thank you very much there, Ryan. And also Matt Hetherington along with Lily Jong with our pregame show, the pregame push. We did an excellent job setting this match up. We have now the quarterfinals for the Supermicro. Men's singles here, good matchup between the four-time Olympian from Poland, Lucian Blaszczyk, 42 years of age, taking on Tao Wenzhang, who we saw earlier today here on table one, and when he beat Damian Alloy, another four-time Olympian. So he obviously had success under those circumstances. Blaszczyk coming in not only as